Color accurate screens can be expensive, really expensive, but they are very important, especially if you are a video editor or photo editor, or you do anything that requires you to color grade. Have you ever had an experience where you edit your video, you're done color grading and everything, and you send it to your phone, then you're like, why is it? Why are the, why is, why are the, did I, why is it, why is it? That's because you do not have a color accurate screen. In this video, I'm gonna share a few things that you should consider when you're buying a monitor. The first thing that I would recommend is an IPS panel. You will find different kinds of panels, but I think the two most popular ones are IPS and TN. TN panels are more popular with gamers because I think they generally come with higher refresh rates if I am correct. And then there's IPS. IPS panels are really good because one, they have a way better viewing angle and IPS uh, screens generally have a better contrast ratio. You also wanna consider color gamut, which is basically the range of colors a panel can produce. There are different kinds of ratings, but in this video, I'm just gonna focus on sRGB and Adobe RGB. Simply put, if you are doing stuff, if you're color grading for digital purposes, so just nothing is going for print, you'll be okay with getting a monitor that has an sRGB rating of 100%. But if you are someone who does a lot of print design, then you might want to consider Adobe RGB because Adobe RGB covers a wider range than sRGB and it caters for your colors that are in your CMYK range. But since this video is specifically for video editors, bare minimum, get a screen that has sRGB rating of 100%. I have an Asus, or an Asus, I don't know how you pronounce it, uh, Pro Art monitor, which has uh, an sRGB rating of 100%. And it works fine. When I edit things on this computer and I put them on my phone and I put them on, on my wife's phone, I post them on Instagram, it looks almost the same, you know? So I'm okay with that. You also want to get a really good resolution. If you can get a 4K screen, but like I said, color accurate screens are already expensive even if they're just 1080p. If you then get it at 4K, it's gonna be even more expensive. But if you can afford it, you will not regret it, trust me. I have a Quad HD monitor here. It's an IPS as well, and it works fine. When I edit 4K videos, I think the Quad HD resolution is really good because it's an in-between 1080p and 4K. So I get to really see enough the pixels for me to be satisfied and to, to be able to edit really well. Then comes something that I actually learned quite recently, which is called the Delta E rating. This is simply a measure used to ensure that the color being displayed is close to what the eye receives. I will link a description down below of like a full description of what the Delta E rating is. But what you're looking for essentially is the lowest number possible. You're looking for something lower than a Delta E rating of two. If the number is higher, then that's not good. Lastly, this is something that I haven't done myself, get a color calibrator. One of the reasons why I love this particular monitor that I have is it came color calibrated already. There's actually a certificate um, written calm and verified. This is just proof to show you that they did already calibrate this. I can safely say that this screen is really good. I can still do the calibration myself, but that requires money for me to buy a calibrator. And once you do that, you have to get a really good one. That means you have to get an expensive one, which means I have to explain to my wife why I need to buy another thing. I can't just be buying gear and gear and gear. She can understand me buying a screen, but a color calibrator? <laughs> Anyways, some of the things that you might wanna consider as well is getting a monitor that can go into portrait mode, especially in this age where we need to edit things in portrait mode because they wanna post them on Instagram, they wanna post them on their stories. It'll be nice to have a screen that actually goes into portrait mode. I hope this video was helpful and if it was, please let me know in the comments down below. If you have anything else that you think I left out or that you might wanna add, please. If you want to see more of these videos and you don't wanna miss a thing, apart from that, my name is Z and until next time.